Hey friend, welcome back. As promised, I'm gonna do a flip through of my gouache art journal. This is a repurposed book that was otherwise headed for the landfill. It is called Ducks and Dragons. It says edited by Jean Kemp. This is actually one of my favorite art journals of the rotation that I have going on right now. The cover, um, it's a quote that I found on Pinterest. I mean, I feel like I'm always talking to you guys about Pinterest. It says, artists are people driven by the desire to communicate and the desire to hide. And so, yeah, there's that. I love it. Um, I did the back cover a few months ago when I was first trying to start to kind of break through my creative block. They're cool side by side too. In some ways I feel like they're the same person. She seems very much like in a meditative state and yet when I'm painting I feel like I'm in a meditative state so there's that. All right let's get in. One, you know the first page of any art journal I think is always the hardest. And sometimes I think that's what stops a lot of people from starting because you just don't know what you want to do first. I feel like she almost looks like a cross between a human and an alien. This is when I kind of really decided that I wanted to make sure that they had um, some kind of lettering around it. But I also hadn't figured out like if I wanted to do a person on each page or a person next to something else and I guess I didn't really create any rules I just kind of whatever happens happens I think that's the general feeling um, that I have when I'm making anything you're gonna notice that a lot of the journaling is me just trying to figure things out um, and yeah I guess that's kind of like what journaling is right I like this girl's face. I personally have this face at least once a day. <laughs> That's a pretty standard smirk for me. Um, you know, I'm showing it to you. Of course, it's all personal. You know, if I wasn't willing for you to see it and put myself out there to be judged, then I guess I could cover it. Um, so I would just hope that if you read it, that you read it without judgment um, and understanding that this is like um, a process for me. You'll also find that often my girls are naked. My daughter, who's nine, has asked me about that. Many people have asked me about that. They've also asked me why I never draw nipples. Um, the nudity for me is more a representation of sometimes it's vulnerability and fear and doubt. And honestly, sometimes I just don't really know what I would want to draw on them as clothing. Like, I'm not a fashion designer, so it's just easy for me to leave them naked um, and confident. And just like, it's whatever I'm naked, you know? And I don't put the nipples because I think that they're like not necessary and maybe kind of makes it more like sexualized than I intended to be. So that's that, now you know. I like this girl, she has like a, I'm not sure if it's confidence or if it's pretending to be confident, but there is something in her gaze that says like, don't try it, you know? I like that and I like the way that her hair came out and this glow. I like to do this yellow glow around um, my drawings often. I think to me yellow is a happy color and it's like a color of like brightness and good energy and so I like to put that around. And I'm noticing that I forgot to um, ink this bird here so We'll leave that for another day. I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> um, this is one of my favorites, and um, I think everything about it is probably as close to perfect as I could achieve personally. Um, I love the way her hair turned out. I love the hand lettering, everything. Of course, I love that 
yellow um, glow and that energy around her. Um, I love that she looks peaceful, meditative. I often miss my long hair. When I was younger, I always had long hair to the point where I begged my family to let me cut it and I wasn't allowed. It, it was past my butt and no one would let me cut it. I cut my hair at 16, fun fact. Um, my mom didn't know and um, she didn't talk to me for like two days. I was in big trouble. She was big mad. Um, but anyway, um, so oftentimes I miss my long hair. I, this was kind of supposed to be like me saying to myself that even though I don't have that hair, I'm still here, I'm still me. Um, this was kind of for me trying to like um, give myself like an emotional boost. Whenever I'm not feeling my best, I kind of try to harness that feeling of like, well, you know, you're a lion, like let's go, you know what I mean? So I wanted to do that and kind of do like a lion's mane for her and even though she looks kind of like sad and not maybe confident in herself it's it's within her you know what i mean it's there she just has to like harness it so that was that um this is one of two spreads that i created inspired by a friend and so this is this is again it doesn't look like me, but this is supposed to be a representation, but I feel like that's what art is, like it doesn't quite make sense. Um, um, this is supposed to be the three versions of me. This is meant to be me as a child with my long, long, long curly hair. Me as, as like, you know, a young adult, you know, maybe early 20s, and me now. <laughs> I'm tired as heck. In any case, um, what did I write? Every version of yourself is rooting for you to succeed. Trust your voice. Some nice motivating words for myself. <laughs> um, well, I guess there's gonna be a lot of um, spreads about me, as I said before, asking questions and trying to figure things out. And I just think that that's been my journey as a parent where I feel like you just question everything that you do, wondering if you've done enough, if you should have done something else. Oh, this was a fun one. It says, when I forget to set the oven timer, I feel like I'm being told by a higher power that someone else should be cooking my meals. I agree. This one, um, like I purposely did it so that they were like the opposites of each other. Um, I'm okay with how she turned out. She's not my fave, but it is what it is. And what I'm noticing at this point is that like I'm practicing lots of different body positions. Um, I still need to really practice like having the girls stand up and doing a full body standing up, but um, I need a lot of work on proportions and stuff like that. So we will get to that when we get to that. Oh, this is one of my favorite quotes that I found on Pinterest years ago. Everything will be okay in the end. And if it isn't okay, then it isn't the end. I like that. Um, there's a couple of illustrations where the girls are bald. And I have no real reason um, for that, except for kind of the same reason why they're naked. It's just the idea of being vulnerable and confident at the same time. Oh, I like that I wrote that. Your most vulnerable self is your most human self. You know what, Shanice? Sometimes you really should like be reaching out to Hallmark. Here's another one, me practicing a different pose and kind of some words of encouragement for myself. This is my second illustration that I didn't like. There are three of them that are in here that I don't like. I just don't really like how the colors turned out. Um, I feel like I'm not sure if she's falling or she's supposed to be leaning like on a table. Um, I don't know, it's just something about this that just didn't work for me. 
This is when I guess both of the kids were beginning school. Um, my son never went to preschool, so um, the first time that I was home alone um, was seven years into parenting. That's a long time to not have some alone time. So it says, tomorrow the kids start school. I will have more time alone than I've had in seven years. Who will I be? Isn't that something? Um, I did this during a live with Anna when we used to do our live coffee breaks. Um, this was around Halloween. I just wanted to do like some Halloween themed illustrations. I like this girl and I just love the look on her face. I love her hair, everything. This is very never ending story for me. I don't know. Some more Halloween. I like her too. And I like the way the spiders turned out. Um, I like that I just left her hair kind of like a whitish gray. This was a cool one. So this is the second one that I did inspired by a friend. And um, she's one of the first people that I met when the kids started at the new school. And we worked on a project together for uh, my daughter's class where we had to build some cabinets. Well, we didn't have to, we volunteered <laughs> to build some cabinets. And I came with like the tiniest little like tool thing, the one where you like can switch the little pieces um, to like whatever. And she came with a whole entire like power tool and I was thoroughly impressed. So um, unbeknownst to her, I drew this. Later I thought, is that weird that I'm drawing someone that I just met? So I literally didn't tell her until like last month. <laughs> and even then I was like, she's gonna think I'm so weird. And I am. Um, yeah, I always need a snack. I like her, this little pensive bat, vampire bat, whatever she is. Uh, this was kind of a tough day, I guess. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I remember that um, Firstborn said something to me that kind of, um, you know, kind of hit me hard. There is kind of like a quiet confidence, a, a kind of like um, she doesn't care what you think about her. Um, you know, when you look back on pictures of yourself and you're just like, I can't believe I thought I was this. I can't believe I thought I was that. And you're looking back and you're realizing that when your mom told you you were beautiful, she was telling you the truth. <laughs> um, and you were too busy, you know, judging yourself based on what? society, friends, whatever, trends. So um, I feel like this person is fine with herself. She's like, it is it is what it is, honey. But I shouldn't have been judging myself so harshly when I was younger. I don't know, I feel like this one was just for fun. I have no idea what my inspiration was here as far as the hair or anything. This one seems to be unfinished. So we'll get to that some other day. Uh, I remember this one. This one's like really cute. And I like that um, it has a little bit of Spanish. And, um, and there's like a lot of sass in her body language. Um, this one I created after a conversation I had with my sister-in-law. And I remember that when she said this, I immediately was like, those are like some pretty power, that's like a very powerful statement. I, I knew that I wanted to draw something. This is what I came up with. I kind of love that like her body looks like water and her hair looks like earth. Does that make sense? I don't know, it's really cool. I don't know what this is about. I don't like you. This sounds like I was probably thinking about someone that was annoying me. And there aren't that many people that annoy me enough for me to take it out in my journal so somebody must have pissed me off um yeah i don't know for a moment i was into this like fairy like being and it's not my fave i'm you know oh yeah i should have said there were four illustrations that i don't like was it three or four i don't know what i said before because i really can't stand this one and it's unfinished i'm hoping that i can come back to it 
at some point and maybe problem solve it. I got problems with her wings, her pose, her face, so many things. So maybe one day we'll figure it out. I accept all suggestions. Um, this, I drew this, um, I painted this on the flight back from New York, but I drew this um, while riding the bus with my mom. There was this, what I presumed to have been a couple, um, but you know, they never spoke to each other <laughs> or looked at each other. They were just on their phones the whole time like that. So I just put love in the time of technology. Um, I'm pretty sure I painted this one on the plane too. I think this is just like a reflection. Every time I go to New York, I always feel like I come back with my my cup is full again. You know what I mean? Like I've seen my family, I've walked around in my home city, and I just feel like emotionally re-energized. So this was kind of like reaffirming that. I don't know what this is about, but I love the colors that are happening here. And... Um, I don't know, are they friends? Are they enemies? We don't know. This wasn't inspired by anybody. This was just me playing around. Um, yeah, remember that time when it seemed like everything was happening at the same time? Because it was. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like that, uh, just breathe, because it is too much. Same thing here. For a while, especially when remote learning first started, um, it was like, wow, we just need to do the best that we can because it is challenging. I love how this one turned out. Um, I just love how she looks like she's like forward. I, I don't know how I managed to do that. I feel like it was a happy accident. I love how the sky turned out. Um... I love how they both look like they've had it. <laughs> um, and yeah, I love it. This one was like one of those draw this in your style um, challenge that you come across on Instagram. And so this is me and my two little monkeys. This I drew after I had a FaceTime chat with Kira, who you might already know. It says, friendship is hard work for me, but sitting across a kind soul makes it worthwhile. Aw, that's nice. Um, well, um, I really like this. I, I don't usually draw this many people in one sitting because, I mean, that's a lot. But I love it and I feel like I would like to do more of it. It gives me a great opportunity to practice different facial expressions, different skin complexions, different hairstyles. Um, and I also like that I decided to keep them all in black t-shirts with um, a word for what they might be feeling. Um, I really enjoyed this as you can probably imagine. I drew this um, around um, the time where um, George Floyd was murdered and there were just so many feelings. Um, so yeah, that's that. And this was just me like emotionally exhausted. And oftentimes when I don't have the words to say what I'm feeling, I journal my feelings through art. And this was very much that. It wasn't meant to just be about me. It's it's also just about me feeling empathy for everyone else around me who is also going through so much. This is another one that I really like. This is like a really raw representation of a day where I think, contrary to what the illustration looks like, it was actually me realizing that I was doing more than I gave myself credit for. Um, you know, there are many days during the pandemic where I felt like I was struggling and I think that I was just like emotionally exhausted. But um, then also realizing that I had done a lot and um, yeah, proud of myself too, dang it. Um, 
there were a lot of things that came, a lot of feelings that um, came to the surface for me after um, George Floyd was murdered, um, feelings about myself that I hadn't really given much thought to. Um, I'm not gonna like go too deep about it, um, but um, I don't know if I finished this quote, what does it say? I've always walked into a room feeling like I represent my entire race. The moment I ask where I'm from, I didn't finish that quote, but um, the short version is that, you know, I think that I have always felt like um, being a person of color, specifically for me being Puerto Rican, there is judgment that has always come with that, you know, whether people think that we are loud or we are lazy or whatever it is. And any time that I've had a job or met someone for the first time, I've always felt like I've had to prove that I'm not that, which is ridiculous. You shouldn't have to prove to anyone who you are. People should take the time to get to know people and not judge them based on stereotypes. Um, but yeah, I think that like during that time where there was so much um, heated conversation around race, um, I think that I had realized that I had a lot of feelings that I hadn't even addressed um, about myself and my own life experiences. So that's that. And this is the one that I did today. Um, I have no idea what this was about. I think I was just kind of playing around. I have no, there's no real meaning. I was just trying um, different facial expressions and um, and that's it, I guess. <laughs> um, this one I'm still working on. Um, again, it's one of those things where I didn't really know where I was headed with it and I need to come back because I don't really like where it was going. We'll problem solve that another day. I really like this one, but now in hindsight, maybe seeing that she's down and she's up might give a different impression, but. Anyway, oh look, she's smiling, see, there's hope. Um, <laughs> this was from a take five art challenge. Um, this is the first time that I did anything that was for a challenge in this book, first and only time. Um, but yeah, that's that. And I think that's the last one. I've got like, I don't know, like 10 pages left. So we'll see what happens. Anyway guys, I hope that you enjoyed this flip through and the stories behind some of them. If you want to see how I created this one, then just keep watching. Thank you so much for being here. Please like this video. And if you haven't subscribed already, I hope that you'll consider doing so. See you next time. Bye.